time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. It is time to find my Instagram. It's Geekly Amanda. G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. And it's time to get this reaction series review started. Alright you all, I am on season 13 of the Mahabharat, and this was a quick little season, it was! I mean, it was only, what, five episodes long, and, but some stuff happened in these episodes. It was like, it, I was like, I, how is this only five episodes long, and so much happened? I'll remember, Draupadi was angry at the Arjun, and she wouldn't let him and his new wife, some, you know, Krishna's sister, Sabhara, Sabhadra in. And Sahadra, she, like, first Arjun tried to talk some sense into her. And, and then even the Pandavas then, she wasn't hearing it. But then that Sahadra, she is hardcore. She walked through that fire. She went and talked to Draupadi. They left it off like, oh, what's going to happen? But Draupadi finally accepted him. She did. Because you know Draupadi's got that kind, loving heart. She's got the kind, loving heart. And, and she knows, like, she's one of those, she, she knows Krishna. She knows the power of Krishna and everything that he could do, I feel like, and, and that he guides everybody in the right directions. So I think she, like, you know, takes that into consideration. I know I would. And she was like, let me welcome your right. Go back and I'm going to welcome your right. That's my Drapati. Well, that was going on. Sh Shakuni and uh, that mean prince and his brother, they, they was upset because, you know, they got stood up at the altar. <laughs> they got stood up. So they was upset and you know they were out for some revenge. Well then the Shikani got this idea to go to this guy. What's his name? Jara Jarasand to help him because he wants to defeat the Krishna. And he went to him because he was like, well, he's a king in one of the areas, and and I guess he can't die because I don't know, something about, you know, that was it a sage gave his father you know, some kind of fruit and a father to have babies and the father split in half and gave it to each of their wives and they took it. And then the wives are going to have like half babies born, like half the bodies. And then they merged together and made him. So now it's like he can't die. He he comes back because I'm telling you, ain't nobody going to uh, try to try to separate those two bodies. Well, we find out who does. But let's let's wait for that. Jaharasan arrested uh, the mean prince and Shikani and all them. And, you know, that's when the mean prince, he started questioning Shikani's skills. Or at least his thinking skills. He's like, you always get us in this trouble, mama. Mama. Because that's uncle. I'm not that. That means uncle. You always get us in trouble. Your your plans never come through. Like, he's saying all this stuff. And Shikani's like, I mean, how are you going to question Shikani? Shikani's one of the smartest ones up in this Mahabharat. And with the most intelligence. Even Krishna will tell you that. And, and you're going to be questioning him because that mean prince ain't too smart. <laughs> I'm going to tell you now. I don't think he's too smart. But anyway, here comes Shukani with his plans. And he gets this little birdie, sends a little message to Karn to come help him. Well, you know Karn's going to show up. Karn's going to show up for his friends. That's the kind of loyalty Karn has. And he does. They was about to write, go up ahead in them. They was about to behead Shikani and, and the mean prince. And, they, and even then, that mean prince like, Hi, uncle, what, what's going on, uncle? And he's like, trust, trust, trust me, darling. Because that's what he always, darling, trust me. Of course, here comes Karn saving the day. Like he always does. With his arrows. He's got those endless arrows. And you know that Jahara's son can't really die. So Karn's just arrow after arrow. Net. Net on Jahara. And he's ripping through him. Here, another net on him. He's ripping through him. And and then that's when Shikani comes. He's like, listen, my, my, my guy Karn here, he can do this all day. He can throw these nets on you all day. He's got the endless supply of these arrows. You ain't going to win this one, Jarasan. Jarasan finally agrees to some kind of alliance. But he has like one condition, kind of like of a demand. He wants Karn to be the king, like a king. He's like, if you're going to do it, we're going to, you have to be a king, Karn. Poor Karn. He's torn because he's got his wife there. She don't want him to be no king. He gave up his crown. And and with the, with his wife and the V uh, what's that? Varash Vrashali? It's hard to say some of these names. But Vrashali, she don't want no to be queen and no kingdom and no king. She don't want none of that. 
I don't think Karen wants it either. And that's why at first he's like, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I can't do it. I he, he like says no. But of course, there's that mean prince is always putting some things like you gave me an oath. And, and here's Karn twist. You know, he's got like these uh, being pulled in on sides, thinking in his head like with these conundrums. Like, what am I going to do? And he starts flashing back. Yes, I gave him my oath. I said, I'll do whatever you do, say. And, and pretty much the mean prince kind of demanded of him. So there's Karn being the, the good guy, you know, but still not making the right decisions, Karn. Because this is going to hurt your wife and then you got a baby coming, Karn. Karn, come on. <laughs> I just want to grab Karn and be like, Karn, you're a good person. You're such a good person. You're talented. You got a good heart. You got great value. You're righteous, Karn. Just do the right thing. So back with the Pandavas, Krishna's over there, right? Krishna's over there talking about Pandavas, and he's telling them, like, we need to go. We need to go defeat this Jahara's son. He's going to be the one standing in your way. He is, and he did hear, like, all the kings there of the towns about to, about, what, is he going to kill him? <laughs> he was about to kill him. I didn't even know what was going on there but because he was trying to stop the, the Yudi for doing that ritual to become independent nation. Cause he's he's an alliance with the mean the mean prince in Shikani. Well, so Krishna is bringing them and like, well, we need to go face them, right? So they're heading to the town with the Jahara son. Then they stop mid tracks. Krishna's like, because right then, that's when Shikani's doing his little plans and starting to work. And Krishna stops. He's like, all right, we can't do this anymore. Just stop mid track. He knew, and he and they even admit he's like, Shikani. Shikani's clever. If only Shikani would use his his gift of, of knowledge and intelligence for good over evil, he would be something. But he doesn't. He doesn't. And so they had to do another plan, right? They they disguise themselves as the Brahmas and, and he even asked Beam. He's like, Beam, you remember you can do this wrestling? Because Jaharasan, I guess his weakness is wrestling. Anybody comes with him to him with a little wrestling challenge, he's gonna take it. So there they come in, and, and they show up as Brahms, always in disguise. They all, th th that's like Krishna's thing. Krishna, he had, remember Arjun dressing up as a woman? <laughs> He's always for the disguises. I Krishna's, listen, Shikani wants to be the most intelligent, but can, he can't get over on Krishna. He can't, he needs to admit, he can never get over on the Krishna. They show up, and, and they start having a little battle right between him and the beam. They start having a little wrestling challenge. I got some footage here. I thought this was interesting, this footage, because it's not just the scene, the the straight scene from the Mahabharat, but it's like the making of the scene, the making of Beam and that Jahara son, like wrestling. I was like, oh, let's check out this together. A little something different, don't you think? Let's get it started. Ready? Let's Go! See? And that's what they were like. They were, they were chanting for him. Look at him. And this is funny because Beam is a real wrestler, isn't he? Oh, look at that. Look how they're making it. And then with the music and slow motion and camera angles, how it just turns into the exciting scene. Look at Beam doing his moves. He's a wrestler now in real life. He got some practice on the Mahabharata, didn't he? Look at that Jahara son. One thing I liked about him, he's got pretty eyes. <laughs> I said, I was like, that Jahara son has some nice eyes. Too bad he wanted to team up with, with the bad guys over there. But look at those eyes. He's got Rittik Roshan's eyes. <laughs> oh, Rittik's got his. That must be fun. I would love to be on set like this, wouldn't y'all? Look at him. Oh, he stood on him. <laughs> Do you remember that scene? I don't remember him standing on him.
but look at that. Look how it turned. I just love this. I love the behind the scenes with this. I hope y'all enjoying it. Oh, he pushed him. Oh, he did jump on him. Oh, I didn't even remember that part. And he had a match, like, beam, they had a match there, didn't they? Oh, look at him. They they had a good match going on. Like, you can't fault. Jahara's son has some moves. He said cut. <laughs> he said cut. Was he directing that scene? Maybe. Look at that. Oh, well, that was something. I like the behind the scenes. I just do. I hope y'all did. But, well, we know what happens then. Because Beam, like, it was like two or three times. Ripped him in half. Right? He, they were wrestling. Got that. Jahara son. Ripped him in half. Then, what's going to happen? He comes back and, and shows up to fight again. And Beam's like, what? Then they fight again. And he done ripped him in half again. And I was like, Beam, you need to do something different. You saw he... he he merged himself back into one and came back alive. He just ripped him in half and he comes back alive again. Well, finally he looks over at Krishna and Krishna's like, all right, rip him in half, show it a little twig, but then you gotta separate him. Far away, like throw it over here, throw it over there so they can't merge. He finally does that. And then the water, right? Wasn't he in the water and does it? And he rips him in the legs and he throws one side way over there and throws another. I'm gonna tell you, I would go behind my tracks on top of that. Not to throw it. I would find. A, I would burn this half over here I, to ashes. Like I would make sure that those bodies ain't merging. Maybe he's so strong. He throws them far enough, and nobody. The bird. Maybe the birds will eat him or something. But I was just like, I would make sure he's dead this time. You done saw him come back to life two times, merging together. Who knows if you got those pieces far enough away? Well, after that, you know that means Prince has no other choice. <laughs> he has no other choice. Like his plans have been fouled. Shakuni and he's kind of mad at Shakuni about all this and his plans are done destroyed and he's like They got to go now to to that end what is it called? Uh, in Indra past the palace the the pain I don't just gonna call it Pandavas palace They got to go over there and and join that little ritual to make him the independent the Country and independent leader and everything Well, they show up <laughs> they show up uh, uh, Karn was there too all three of them Karn, the mean prince, Shakuni, they show up to this palace and they just can't believe their eyes. I couldn't believe our eyes. I was like, how did they, how did, how did Pandavas did all this? <laughs> we got a little bit of them surprised at, at looking at this palace. Y'all ready to watch this with me? Let's go. Yeah, it comes out the water. Look at, look at them. <laughs> look at Shakuni. A car, a car can't believe it either. They're like, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm just saying, you could tell that uh, they have some jealousy, especially that mean prince. And rightfully so, because that palace ain't playing around. Remember when they walked in it and they have like these illusions? And well, first, I think they learned that little light trick from that one that when they tried to kill him in that wax palace, remember, and burn burn up the Pandavas and, and, and even Kunti. And but that guy had like those lights and everything, took that little light and, and made it their own, and illusions made it their own. Like they went to all these different places. And they, they done took the best parts of these places and, and made, put it into their palace. When they arrived, they meet some guy. What's this called? Sh Shishapu, Shishapal? I never heard of him, but I guess he was at, you know, Draupadi's um, Swar Swarva, when, you know, to try to get her married or find her husband. Well, he was at that because I guess he remembered, you know, our Jew, our Karn from there and, and, and uh, the mean prince. And he starts talking smack to him and making that uh the mean prince and them kind of upset with him but then you know they kind of was like well he's also don't like the krishna i guess the krishna and him you know 
he, he doesn't like him, but I guess when he was born, he took away, Trishan took away his powers, and, and, and in return, he gave him like a hundred, a hundred, you know, forgiveness for the unrighteous deeds that he does, or something like that, so I thought that, I think it was, was it, Shikani was like, we should maybe team up with him, and try to stop this, this uh, ritual. It kind of leaves off this season where they're going to go do this. And, and next season's even shorter. only has like three episodes, which I'm going to get to this week. Because I'm like, I need to know what's going to happen. All right, so let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, and all that down below. Till next time. Mwah!